uh, I tried to, to compare the situation in Moldova and Romania concerning the legal framework, but also how the legislation works in favor of preservation and good management, or how to build uh, uh, good management according to the European uh, Convention, but also how it was implemented and how it is used as a good tool for improving the national legislation. So just to compare how the, the roots of the, the implementing the Valletta Convention in Moldova and Romania, you could compare the, the uh, chronology. So when the convention was uh, signed by both countries, so in 96 in uh, uh, Romania and 98, so it's a good parkour. So just two years difference, but then Romania ratified in 1997 and Moldova ratified just three years later in 2001. You could see uh, from the uh, signature to the uh, ratifying in the parliament, it's a long way. It's a bureaucratic thing, but also the Ministry of Culture, the government should be more interested and to lobby in the parliament to vote and ratified in finally the, the uh, international treaty, in this case Valletta Convention. So in Moldova it was three years, but it's not enough because from ratifying and in trying to force it's another stage which also it's uh, it's important to take in account so you uh, we could see that Romania in fact became part of Valletta convention in 1998 and Moldova just in 2002 but also it's not enough even if the constitution in both cases are mentioning that as soon as the country the state signed the treaty the treaty is more important than the national law but it doesn't work because it should be the international treaty, in our case, the Valletta Convention, should be transformed in the national law. And then the Valletta Convention will work and will be a real legal tool to preserve or to create or to improve the frame in each country. That's why uh, it's in another state, uh, stage of implementing the Valletta Convention in both countries. So in 2000, Romania actually approved the law for the first time, the law concerning archaeology and archaeological heritage preservation, and Moldova just in 2010, and probably still today, Moldova was could be absent of this because in 2005 it was an initiative of the scholars, and in 2009 it was an initiative of NGO to push on the the the, the project, to prepare, to improve the project, to bring the, together the experts around Europe and to try to prepare a really good, okay, hopefully a really good project of law and lobby in the, parla uh, in the parliament. So we succeed because it was the change uh, of the political situation in Moldova and in 2010 the uh, Democrats, but actually it was the first case on the left parties and the uh, right parties voted together for the one project, unanimously. So you could see it's a good example when the heritage or archaeological heritage could bring together different parties together uh, and, and vote and support. So also it's not enough. But anyway, probably it was a good, it's a good example uh, when the party could sit together and vote together for the common past in a way to protect or to create or to improve the, the legal uh, framework. So uh, in Romania, in Moldova, we have many similarities, not, not just the language is common, and the history is common, but also we have also the structure, the management. So the ministry, uh, I think it's centralized, more or less. Uh, the Ministry of Culture in both countries, uh, it's the main body, executive body responsible for the cultural heritage, including archaeological, and also the archaeological commission, the national archaeological commissions in both countries are consultative bodies for the uh, Ministry of Culture. And uh, then it's coming who is the main body and the Ministry of Culture responsible uh, for uh, heritage and archaeological heritage in special. So in Romania, it is uh, an institute, the National Institute of uh, Heritage, which should bring the archaeology to, but it's not covering enough. Uh, because I think it's at all, probably we could say at all, Corina uh, say exactly, because uh, it's a remain uh, of the previous time, of the socialist time, when the academy is considering, or the institutions of the academy, they're considering that the main body responsible for uh, research in the country. And the Institute of Archaeology is considering that it's the main important institute uh, who has to deal with the archaeology. But Corina showed that the slide. Uh, because at many other institutions and universities and the national museums 
or the county museums are playing a huge role in preservation, in excavation, or in preventive archaeology. So it's a little bit uh, different than it was before. And now the law in Romania, for example, uh, concerning the uh, contract uh, archaeology. From one point, Valeta is encouraging. From another point, the national law is saying nothing. And it's a, it's a good question how to accept in this economic open market uh, the uh, contract archaeology. So in Romania, it's a, it's a special case. Uh, and in Moldova, the contract ar archaeology doesn't exist. Because still today, it's a conservative approach, including according to the law, the state institutions are responsible for everything. So which is not so democratic, I think. Uh, so we have, according to the law, we succeed to create the new agency. For the first time, the agency dealing with the archaeology. So it's called ANA, National Ar Archaeological Agency. Uh, now, under new uh, reformation of the government institutions, probably they will bring together two agencies in one, because in 2005 it was created the Na Agency for the Monuments, and uh, in 2010, 2011 actually became an active uh, uh, National Ar uh, Archaeological Agency, and probably now, as a new intention to reform the, the, the different uh, government structures, they will bring two agencies together and uh, will create the new one dealing with the uh, heritage and probably with two different departments. Anyway, I think we succeed uh, having uh, the Valletta Convention on base of, of the law on archaeology and try to uh, implement in practice the, the, the convention. Uh, in Republic of Moldova. So, as a result of these uh, uh, new changes, we could see the law, to approve the law is not enough, because the law should be very flexible. Uh, one we saw before, one is theoretical approach, and another is daily life, and another is the practice, uh, how to implement. So, as we could see in Romania, already a couple of times, the law was updated, hopefully improved, changed, but Changes not always are in favor of improving the law because the politicians are trying to change the law depending on the own interest of the lobby groups. And in Moldova, it's a case. In 2015, the parliament changed the law, but not to improve the law, but to take some uh, duties from the archaeological agency because it's too much. And if the construction companies, especially, would like to do something they are too much dependent on agency to get the right or to get this uh, uh, authorization. So that's why just they try to, to, to cut some duties of the agency. In Romania something similar happened, but now uh, let's say um, it's under discussion already, I think three times uh, in Romania, it was uh, in four already times, the, the different working groups to build the new, uh, or to build the code, the culture heritage code, uh, which should cover uh, archaeological issues too, but because the politicians uh, are not uh, so uh, interested probably, uh, and because of so many political changes, one government is coming uh, and do not, uh, does not uh, have the interest to support the previous uh, initiatives. That's why now it's, ah, it's on agenda, but the progress, it's, it's, it's still under discussion. In Moldova, we succeed with it's another way, so uh, the, the government uh, lobby in the parliament couple of law concerning the heritage, intangible and so on, and material and dematerial, and uh, uh, I think it's good. Uh, but how the works, how the, the legislation and the, uh, the law works in practice, it's another issue, and Corinna uh, very well pointed. So, what we succeed last year, we lobby in the parliament the changes in the criminal and uh, administrative uh, codes. Because the tool to preserve, of course, it should be how to punish the guys or the companies or the institutions who fail the law. So we succeed to uh, do some changes in the criminal code. And for the first time, we have a huge list of different uh, issues fine or punishment uh, uh, according to different. So, for example, uh, what is the general article on TEF? Special point it's added concerning the archaeological sites or archaeological uh, crimes. And also, which we succeed uh, to lobby in the parliament 
uh, not just the archaeological sites, well known sites, but also the possible archaeological sites or the possible archaeological goods in the area. So it's uh, a little bit uh, uh, specific issue, but anyway, I think it's a good example that they accepted and you uh, could see looting, not just general looting, uh, looting of the goods, but including looting of the archaeological goods from the site or robbery or different other situations. So in each uh, article from the criminal code where it's something related to the uh, issues concerning uh, uh, criminals or say let's say different other uh, things, we succeed to include the mention concerning the archaeological stuff too. And also we succeed to uh, add additional articles uh, in the criminal code concerning the damaging and destruction of the culture property and also the punishment and so on. And conducting unauthorized, uh, uh, without any authorization uh, of activities in, uh, in especially this is against uh, construction and the companies which are they're trying to do a lot of things without any things concerning archaeology and preservation and also um, uh, sailing uh, and uh, so trying to, to, to fight against illegal traffic and sale of archaeological goods or culture goods in general and uh, also the issue concerning the metal detector we try to uh, take the Romanian experience so it's generally it's prohibited without authorization but now the, the mechanism itself how to implement it's, it's not developed. Unofficially in Moldova, which is a very small country, we have more than 2,000 users of the metal detectors, of course, illegally. And the, 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 the problem is a huge one. And the question when it was discussing how to, to, to prevent and how to, to work and who is responsible, it, it's a very specific one. So this is another uh, change in the conservation code. Uh, in Romania, for example, uh, they didn't change the criminal code, it's just under the general law. If it's looting or something else, it's nothing mentioned uh, about the culture goods or archaeological goods. And in Romania, mostly uh, the policy are using the, the contravention code and contravention uh, issues. So we succeed to, to change this code too, and you could see just a few examples if it's, uh, the, the regime of protection was break by, by some uh, person uh, or by some company, they should be, of course, uh, fine between. It's not so huge one, but anyway, according to the Moldovan economic realities, I think it's enough. Uh, uh, this is the question how to implement these uh, legal issues. So the responsible bodies who are responsible for issues concerning the preservation from the management but also if something illegal oops, it was accounted, who is responsible to, uh, to deal with such questions. And under uh, discussion in Moldova uh, in 2015 and 16, the police or Minister of Internal Affairs always say, no, it's not our duty, please take away. So the it was a huge debate. And then finally in the parliament when it was discussed and it was approved, the police it's included because they are responsible to take care. So who, who could be? And finally, we, um, uh, the agency is responsible for something area and then the National Archaeological Agency is for something else and different other departments or the directorates from the region are responsible for one. But the main body who has to register the case and then to send to the prosecutor office, of course, it should be the police. So, but it was a ping pong between uh, the lobby group from the, the uh, Ministry of Culture and Ministry of Internal Affairs because they always say, no, it's not our duty, please exclude the, uh, the responsibility of Minister of Internal Affairs on this issue. Now, of course, it's under the duty, but it doesn't work, as Corina mentioned. So how we could now develop uh, or how we could implement? Of course, well, the bureaucracy, it's the main issue. Centralized system. In small country, it's good and also it's not good because just to be everything centralized in the center, in the government, it's not good. How we have to divide the responsibility between the uh, administrative bodies, not from the central level, but also from the local, from the regional level too. Monitoring, who is doing and how is doing the monitoring of 
the legal framework implementing the law but also to monitor the situation in the each side according to the general uh, register of the sites in Moldova or the uh, national repertory in, uh, in Romania. So evaluation, when, how, and also what we have to do with the evaluation reports. These are in favor of preservation or is it just formal reporting and putting the paper somewhere uh, on the table and forgetting about the, uh, the reports. So how to transform the evaluation process in real tool of preservation and the manage improving the management. So publication and access, also Valletta Convention is trying to push and to encourage to ensure the access to the results of uh, excavations or to the uh, archive documents concerning or the uh, goods uh, uh, on archaeology. But uh, not just the place, it's a huge problem. Also the access, because in some cases, in small museums or in some collections or in all the excavations, the guys who were responsible for the excavation, they consider it's like an own property. So it's mine. It's not the state. It's not the public. It's mine. I will publish. When? I don't know. Many people are already retired. They didn't publish, but they also did not give the access to the, the, uh, to the results. So this is a huge problem. How to transform the Valletta, how to transform the national legal framework in the practice? So it's a question probably of education, of changing mentality, which is not so easy and taking a time. So conservation and uh, preservation, it's another issue. And the Valletta, I think it's showing very well. And the national legislation in both cases, the each archaeological project has to include the conservation and preservation issues too. But in practice, I think it's not happening because it's not so easy. So the main problem still actual for example illegal activities and this is a case from Kishna from the capital the company huge company construction company they're not taking care so much so it's they destroyed for example in the center of uh, Kishna the downtown uh, the remains from 17th 18th century for example huge remains a huge area and they built the new uh, huge building of the Moldova gas company so which is Moldo Russian company mostly Russian okay the metal detecting it's still, I already mentioned the question, it's still actual and men, it's becoming more and more attractive for dealers because it's a good business. Not because they're very much interested in, in uh, uh, preservation or in uh, learning something from the past. No, it's a good business. We have different stuff from different periods which is selling uh, illegally on the market. And the biggest collectors, which is strange, uh, in Moldovan case, are former uh, police officer, our former prosecutors, our former judges, and how to fight against them. Because it's a huge network, and actually it's impossible to find the best solution. Uh, it's easy if the people from the Minister of Internal Affairs or from the prosecutor offer will, will do the, the job. But they're not so much interested. Ah, it's not so important. Always is the question. So it's not important we could... So illegal traffic. Also, it's actual. Just a few years ago in Amsterdam, it was a case. So, from in diplomatic bag from Moldova sent to Europe, at the Amsterdam uh, airport custom stop, and you could see some just few huge head of Hercules. It's like this, and it's very heavy. So, and a lot of other stuff. Just you could uh, imagine using the diplomatic bag. So the dip diplomatic post issues from Moldova sending to Amsterdam. And this is Romanian case. With the bracelets, you, you remember probably it was a huge scandal in Romania, still under discussion, unsolved still today. They return using this repatriation uh, law, but it's it's specific case. I will not go deeply in this because it's, it's, it's probably it's another conference. And also a lot of coins which are discovered in Romania and sailed in different areas around the world. In some cases, the National Museum uh, repatriated uh, a couple uh, of, of hundreds, uh, I think, uh, coins. Very small quantity. But it's very small quantity. With huge judicial yes. So, conclusions, just few. So it's not enough to have uh, well-developed legislation, even if we are part of these different international frameworks, uh, because... It's the question of implementation. How? Which country and has better experience? Holland? Mm. England? F 
France, I don't know, because the network of dealers concerning for the illegal traffic, it's a huge and covering all countries around the world. And the way usually it's from the poor country sending to the rich countries. So the collectors mostly are settled are, or are citizens of the richest countries. So this is a huge issue for the future discussions. Lack of continuity in reforming the legal framework, which I mentioned, not just in legal framework, but also in developing the management issues. For example, in our case, or in Romania case, if the, the different political party uh, is coming to the power, usually they are just cutting or the stopping what the previous one did. It's not good, we'll change. And that's why uh, in Romania, for example, they didn't finish the good databases, which started four or five databases, and no one is finished, just stopped. Okay, it's impossible to finish, but to right, to develop them, they started a good job, and actually at the half of the state, they stopped because no money, another government, the, the, the administrative changes, one institute uh, was uh, included in another one. So the continuity of reforming, I think it's, it's a way of, success and doing uh, real reforms and doing a real job in, in our uh, area of heritage. Lack of efficient communication, and you mentioned very well, Kate, so I'll not stop here, because your case, even in Austria, in small city, it's impossible to understand each other. Why? Also the interest, economic issues, business issues, and also ownership and other, I think, political things too. So probably the state bodies, but the state bodies are people, are citizens. And always I'm asking myself, people who are doing politics, they also were in the kindergarten, in the school, in the university, they are between us. And when they are becoming important political guys, they're not hearing, they're not understanding, they're not dealing really uh, with the cultural heritage issues. Just few of them around Europe and you, we could find good examples. But in general, politicians are not so much interested, even if they decided at the European level to declare next year a European Year of Heritage. It's good, but it's not enough. Because heritage is part of our daily life. Heritage is every year, everywhere. It's not just occasionally of something. It's important that will stress probably attention around Europe to, uh, to deal with the heritage and to try to share more experience and Valletta Convention encouraging uh, to share the experience, to communicate, to use best practices and try to help each other. Probably by this way, we could succeed in the near future and to uh, improve the management of archeological resources, not just in Europe, but probably around the world. So I'll stop here. Thank you so much for your attention and we have time to discuss.